What's up, Ginger Cornets? I'm sure many of us are familiar with the various Pokemon manga. From adventures to ETOP, which I just learned was created by a head <laughs> artist, oddly answers more questions than it raises, to this, Pokemon has been in the graphic novel business, in one way or another, since 1996. In fact, the first Pokemon manga was originally serialized in Koro Koro magazine in Japan. You know, it's a real shame we never got any Pokemon comics or newspapers in the West. Pikachu meets the press, a Pokemon newspaper strip collection. I can't believe this actually exists. <sighs> Let's get this over with. While Pokemon is likely one of the most well-documented franchises of all time, I found surprisingly little information about these comics online. Heck, I couldn't even find a single video on them. So let's change that. It's finally time to take a look at the bizarre Pokemon newspaper comics. Alright, first impressions are everything, and... Oh, you've gotta be kidding me. So, it seems the title is in all caps, except for the stupid E here. Why? Oh, is it because of the accent? These people do know capital accented letters exist, right? Also, Pikachu looks pretty excited to just see a random Pokemon logo PNG slapped right on there. But who cares about that? The back has a synopsis! Ten bucks, huh? I wish that's all I had to pay for this. Welcome to a piquant, picares, poignant Pokemon universe unlike anything you've experienced before. Nice use of alliteration, guys. If you think you know Pokemon, we dare you to open the pages of this book and think again. That is, if you can stop laughing and crying long enough to string a coherent thought together, yeah, I'll be crying all right. Written by Gerard Jones, renowned American comic book writer and media critic, and drawn by Ashura Benimaru, one of the Japanese creators of Pokemon, this completely original collection of Pokemon comic strips will delight children and adults alike. Kids will love the familiar characters, new storylines and gags, and adults will enjoy the subtle personalities, universal themes, and psychological humor? Okay, maybe there's more to these comics than I thought. Plus find 176 hidden Pokemon, one in each daily strip, yeah that's great. The comics artist, Ashura Benimaru, is currently working at HAL Laboratories and has had a design or advising role in many Kirby games. As for the writer, Gerard Jones, yeah, we'll get to him in a bit. But let's get to reading and... Oh. Oh. Oh no. The first thing many will notice when reading is that the art leaves quite a bit to be desired. Now, Benny Maru is a really talented artist, but if I had to guess, I'd say it's a mix of a lack of time, money, as well as a pressure to mimic the style of American comics. Unfortunately though, the art isn't the only thing that sticks out. For one, the comic doesn't have its own title card, instead opting to use the generic Pokemon logo, which comes off as a bit cheap. Also, while the comic uses characters from the anime, there were a lot of changes made. For one, Ash isn't on a journey, he's attending school here. There is something kind of funny about how this comic uses a school setting, 16 years before Sun and Moon would. And here's another inconsistency. In the first ever strip, Misty uses a Squirtle, but later on, it's Ash who Squirtle belongs to, with Horsey more or less filling in the role for it. As this comic ran from September to March, there would often be specific strips to tie into holidays, like this one for Halloween, where we see... Wait, hold on, is that... Mimikyu? I mean, it definitely looks a lot more like Mimikyu than this connect the dots looks like anything. I think it's supposed to be Meowth? Whatever, let's just move on. There's also this Christmas strip, which is probably my absolute favorite one. Here we see Ash and Pikachu asleep on Christmas Eve before hearing Santa Claus outside. Ash doesn't realize who it is and commands Pikachu to quote, shut him up. It's extremely dark and super out of character, but it definitely gave me some much needed shock value at this point. There's even a comic where, strangely enough, Ash and his mom celebrate Thanksgiving. Is this implying that they're supposed to be American? Also, I never took color theory, so take this with a grain of salt, but where'd the color go? Well, according to this archived page from Viz Media's website, only the Sunday issues were in color. I mean, sure, most newspapers were in black and white anyway, but it makes things clear that the budget for this comic was pretty low. However, not only do the majority of strips lack color, but the time dedicated to each panel often seems minuscule. Many have very minimal backgrounds, or simply none at all, and even the strips in color often just have simple gradients. I know this is a newspaper comic, so I shouldn't be expecting too much, 
But it is kind of hard to feel immersed in a Pokemon world when the world itself is so... absent. As far as the characters go, most act pretty similar to how they did in the original series anime. There are some differences, such as Ash being quite a bit more cynical. I mean, we already talked about how he seemingly killed Santa Claus, but it's clear the staff had at least a rough understanding of what they were working with. However, not only do the humans get to talk in this, but the Pokemon do as well. Like, to each other. Don't worry, we don't have another talking Pikachu on our hands. Here's a quick rundown of all of Ash's Pokemon. Pikachu is a spoiled brat. Alright, seems familiar enough. Bulbasaur is a pessimist, Charmander is an optimist, and both are super irrelevant. Squirtle is a party animal, and looks disturbingly like Franklin in this one panel. Jigglypuff is the exact same as it is in the anime. Snorlax just eats and sleeps a lot, so yeah, same as the anime. Then there's Metapod. Yeah, you've probably noticed the timeline of Ash having this team makes absolutely no sense. I've already stopped trying to question it. Metapod is the philosophical one, and honestly the closest this comic comes to its self-proclaimed psychological humor. And lastly, Clefairy, the self-conscious mystery who probably sees more screen time than Pikachu in later strips. Pretty fitting for the Pokemon who was originally supposed to be Ash's partner. But okay, how do I actually feel about this comic? Well, if you haven't caught on, I really wasn't a fan. Unironically, anyway. It also seems many others weren't either, as the strip only ran from September of 2000 to March 2001, not even a full year. And besides the obvious uncanny art, there are a few pretty valid criticisms. Most of the time, the writing ranges from awkward to downright abysmal. Jokes rarely hit, and it often feels either too childish or too cynical. Not to mention, the whole thing just seems to lack the charm Pokemon properties are known for. Even the Japanese newspaper comic, which I could not find any information for by the way, aside from an article on Dosagu's backpack, is able to put a smile on my face, and I don't even know what it says. I also have a hard time determining who this western comic would even be appealing to. Non-Pokemon fans would just be left confused at it all, and those who were fans probably wouldn't appreciate the changes made to the anime's canon. It's really not surprising that the Pokemon Company seems to not even acknowledge this comic's existence. Also, while I have no concrete evidence of this, Pokemon USA, which would become the Pokemon Company International, was founded in February 2001, just a month before the strip's ending. I would not be at all surprised if these events turned out to be related. Oh yeah, let's talk about that final strip. Here we see Ash arriving in the Johto region, with plenty of Gen 2 Pokemon, as well as Team Rocket present, who were surprisingly absent up until this point. This is one of the few instances of Gen 2 Pokemon, despite the comic starting after the North American release of Gold and Silver. So, it's likely most of the comics were planned out pretty far in advance. But honestly, that's really all I've got. Despite being a collection of every comic, Pikachu Meets the Press does little to document the history of them. Also, this paper feels super cheap. Then again, this book is probably older than I am. My immediate thought was to try and contact the writer in order to get more information about the comic's creation, but that's sort of where this story takes a dark turn. In 2018, writer Gerard Jones was sentenced to six years in prison. He did some really disgusting things, which I don't think I can talk about on YouTube. Also, I try to keep this channel family friendly, which is why I'm only glossing over this point, but Jones was found to be in possession of chat. <laughs> Feel free to do your own research if you want to learn more, but I kindly ask that you refrain from discussing it in the comments. The Pokemon newspaper comics are an absolutely bizarre part of the franchise's history, one that the Pokemon Company and Viz Media will likely never acknowledge again. Still, it's fun to look back at some of the more obscure parts of Pokemon, and with the 25th anniversary looming over us, I don't think we'll be in any shortage of new Pokemon media anytime soon. Sorry if the ending felt a little bit abrupt, I really didn't have any other way to segue, and I felt like I sort of needed to mention that fact, as it was sort of a big part of the comic's history. But yeah, this marks the first video where I've had to censor a word, and I had to censor two of them. Anyway, I'm curious what you guys want to see revealed for Pokemon's 25th anniversary. You can call me basic, but I'd like to see Diamond and Pearl remakes as long as they can, uh, have enough time in development. I'm sure many of you have felt this before, but my first Pokemon game was Platinum, so it's weird to me that the generation I started playing with is now the generation that's probably gonna be seeing remakes. So, that makes me feel old. Alright, I hope you have a great, fantastic rest of your... 
I don't know, week, day, month, whatever. And I'll see you later, Gator Taters.